Hello, hi everyone. Well, hopefully everyone's going to join pretty quick. Um, tonight's the night of the webinar, How to Help tr Children in Times of Trouble. And um, as I think about last month when some of us gathered, if it's your first time to join this webinar, then welcome, welcome. We're going to have a good God time together and and um, just invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, who is our comforter, and who is the children's number one helper and comforter too. So unprecedented um, times, hey, who would have thought that a month ago when we gathered on, the, on a webinar that um, churches would be in lockdown and we wouldn't be gathering like we have been gathering freely for so many years, well, in the life of the church. So we trust the Lord and um, lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways we acknowledge him and he directs our path. So he knows what's ahead and also he tells his friends and he gives us the heads up. So I believe that as we continue to seek him with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our strength, that he will give us so many strategies and this is the church's glorious time. Uh, even though it's so full of stress for some people, it's full of anxiety and um, things that are troubling people, um, we can go to the rock, the rock of our salvation for help and strength in this season, in this time. So uh, hopefully I'm talking to parents and children's ministers, grandparents, hello to the grandees. You are vital to the children's well-being. Um, having being a grandmother. I am um, spending more time in prayer covering my grandchildren and having some special moments too because Brendan and I can gather. We can be two that are added to the family to visit. So thank you Jesus for that. For those of you who can't be with your parents or, or with your children or with your grandees, more power to you. There is no distance in the spirit. Um, God is faithful. God is good. God is our protector. He is our well-being. Hello, I'm preaching. Um, <laughs> is that okay? So remember with this webinar, love your communication. Love to talk back and forth um, by seeing your questions and your comments. And I can track those. Hey, Des, how are you? Um, there are people joining us from all over the world tonight. We have the US. We have Europe. We have many from Asia and many from Oz and others elsewhere in New Zealand as well. So here we are. We have a heart for children. We have a heart for the things that God wants to bring to the children. And we want to see them flourish and be empowered during this difficult time. And that's what God can do. That's what God can do. Do you believe it? Yes, so um, I'm going to pray and as people are jumping on to the webinar, um, we just believe that God will speak through me. So Father, I thank you for your presence. Lord Jesus, you said you would always be with us. And I pray for those who have joined us tonight and those that will see this webinar in the future, that Lord, you would speak to us, Holy Spirit. Welcome. Welcome into the midst of us. Welcome into the homes that we are in tonight. Welcome, welcome, and have your say and have your way. Lord, we, we seek you more than anything because, Lord Jesus, you are the one. You are the rock of our salvation. And we ask all of this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen from wherever you are. All right, so I'm going to switch over my mode to the screen. Um, to share the screen with my PowerPoint because I love visuals and I just want to talk to you firstly about, I look, your churches are probably doing kids church online as part of uh, the out, 
reaching to your church families. But I just want to sh put a shout out to um, our team, all in creative team, Sam and Beck and Brendan and Hope and our church also, because OKTV Global was able to jump in and start Kids Church Online. So for the last two Sundays, we have been putting out messages and fun and comedy and characters and a, a message of hope and ministry to the children. And next Sunday is Easter Sunday, so we've got a great um, service planned for there. So please join OKTV OK Global YouTube channel and subscribe and tell everybody because when the kids aren't watching their own um, Sunday services with their own church, they can go to our channel and all week long they can see so many fun things and stuff that's going to feed their spirit and um, build them up. So there you go. So that's Kids Church Online. We're excited about that. So here we go, talking to you tonight, sharing with you some things and um, I am not a clinical uh, expert but I am a minister of 27 years to children, a school teacher, trained um, and a Holy Ghost woman. So come on, that's got to count for a lot. So I'm going to share what I have. All right, so helping children in times of trouble. And uh, this is the scripture that's on my heart for right now. John uh, 16, 33, you already read it probably. Um, and everything Jesus said I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. Hello forced rest for some of us and then for those of you who've got kids at home it's actually <laughs> forced uh, activity right because a lot of children don't have naps anymore so for in this unbelieving world hello you will experience trouble and sorrows but you must be courageous this is the passion I love it for I have conquered the world oh such a great word from God. He has conquered the world. Therefore, we can have confidence and we can have rest. Whatever your biggest question is for your child, children or grandchildren, or the children that are in your kids' church that you can't get to right now, God's got the answer. So most of my content tonight is going to be spiritual. And I'm going to share with you at the end um, a great ministry that's going to help you practically as well all right so look at this what are troubles troubles cause worry and distress trouble can be danger trial suffering sickness and crisis can cause strife in the home agitation torment fretting conflict inconvenience hello who's who's got a mountain of toilet paper at home who has got none um, who would have thought that this would be a global crisis uh, and disruption all of our lives in some way shape or form right now have been disrupted and even when things are seemingly normal I don't believe we'll ever be the same but there will still be crisis there will still be challenges there will still be opportunities for children to stress out and so um, I don't know about you, you might have been a traumatized child. You might have faced difficulties as a child. And here you are now ministering and loving and caring for the children in your world. Come on, well done. We're not perfect yet, but God's helping us every step of the way. So these are some of the things that kids, that children face every day. Opinions of other school, well, most of them aren't at school right now, but school has challenges. It might be learning difficulties. It could be bullying at school, um, cyber bullying, bullying at home. The world's view of life. There are some crazy things, conspiracy theories going all around. And who knows, maybe some of them might have some truth in it. Um, the multimedia that is bombarding our children with bad news, the fear that is in their face, self-image issues, gender issues, and so many others. These are some of the things that children um, can face in everyday life. But there are children too also that they may face these things in their life. Abuse, 
sexual abuse, emotional abuse, neglect, exposure to pornography, chronic sickness and disease, the death of a loved one, pressure, the pressure of achievement, relocation can stress kids out, unemployment of a parent. Now right now I'm sure there are many children whose parents have um, lost their jobs and the children are hearing the conversations of their parents and seeing the stress on their face and they pick up. Children are so sensitive. They pick up, even without words, the tension that can be in the air. So we, we want to help crisis. And here we are, a world plague. Who would have thought we would have a world plague that um, would come at this time and so their children are hearing ways to stay safe and ways to look after themselves and ways to keep people at bay um, that can put fear into well not just children but um, adults and youth as well so on the lighter side I just thought of some things that I see in children that I've learnt they're so funny and honest. They love life. They're usually happy in the morning. <laughs> they can't wait to wake up, right? They respond to love. They're scared of the dark. They need attention. They give great hugs. No fear until they learn how to fear. Fear is a learnt behavior. They adore their parents. You know, children adore their parents and want their parents' affection, even if their parents are abusive. Children just want, that's an innate need in a child. They know that they're special. They learn fast. They bring so much joy, hey, don't they? What else have I got here? Let me see, hang on. There they are, there it is. They are a reward from the Lord. They are vulnerable. They respond to bright colors. They enjoy music. They interpret their world through drawing. I tell you something that I haven't thought of to write down about tonight, but getting children to draw, free draw, just a piece of paper. What's on your heart? What do you see? What's on your mind? Draw what's troubling you. Um, conversational things like that and, and sit down with them and draw and talk. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. They interpret the world through drawing. So use that as a tool of conversation they love repetition they need stimulation they need direction they need correction guidance they thrive on encouragement they have great imaginations they love stories they imitate adults they need friends they need nurturing they love lollies and they love to act all those things and so much more Actually, I was just thinking of they thrive on encouragement. It was my uh, second grandson's birthday. He turned 14 on uh, Sunday and I wrote him a mega letter, a long letter on purpose. And it was inserted to his birthday card because, you know, cards stay up on the wall for a little bit. But a letter is something that can be kept. And I actually saw him today and I asked him, how was the letter? He said, that was a keeper, nanny. Um, so encouraging, so helpful. So here is a time that too, you can write letters, snail mail letters would be an awesome time to write to the children in your world and the grandchildren in your world and the children that are at home. If you're a pastor, children's leader, write snail mail letters to the children and send it. How encouraging would that be to them, for them to get that in the mail? The things that I want to know about children, here's how they think, what they dream, what are their dreams for the future, what do they see in me, this is the thing that staggers me, that children want to hang with me, no matter how old I get, they still want to play with me, they still want to hang with me, it's awesome. How they love, so unconditioning, children are so forgiving, they're so quick to move forward, to move on with a sorry, a sincere sorry. How they are so resilient. Why they never want to go to bed. <laughs> because, you know, I want to go to bed. <laughs> um, what is it about McDonald's? Hello, the marketing over there all these years, they still want to go there usually. 
how they manage to melt my heart. Yes, how creative they are. What do they think about this world? How they relate to God? That's a big one. How do they see God? Who is he for them? To communicate and to talk about these things in this time, that's awesome. And what are their inner voice conversations? So these are some of the things that I want to know about kids. And I guess you would have some things that you want to know too. So you can send them. All right, you can uh, uh, send them on to me and I'd love to answer some of those questions and hear some of your comments about kids and these times of trouble. So here are some of my thoughts, all right, some of the ideas I have along the way. So there's practical and spiritual and I focused on sleep. Let me talk about sleep for a minute. I'm going to come to you, my big face. Ha, huh? hello. Um, sleep, sleep time with children, preparing them to go to sleep because we might um, drop off to sleep consciously but unconsciously there's so much going on. God can speak to the children through dreams. God can bring his presence and he never sleeps nor slumbers the Bible says. So there's ministry to the children through the night and um, why is it that the enemy comes at night time and children are like, oh, don't turn out the light or don't shut the door? What is that? It's a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of fear that tries to come at night time. And night time should be the most amazing looking forward to dropping off to sleep and resting and being restored during our sleep. So there's a psalm that I love. You've probably heard me if you know me. Psalm 4 verse 8, I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. There's a story that I tell often to children about a boy called Jerome. He was a foster child that we met in New Zealand. And we were talking to the children at a conference about peaceful sleeping. And I said, who, who has nightmares and who has trouble going to sleep at night? And all these little hands came up. So I said, there's a scripture. And I quoted that scripture and I said, imagine, imagine if you could write that on your pillowcase and read it before you go to sleep and then sleep on it. Well, this little foster boy, 10 year old boy, must have captivated him because the next day um, he went home to his foster mum and he asked her to take him shopping to get a pillowcase and some fabric markers and overnight it took him three hours apparently he wrote the scripture on the pillow and he came the next day and gave it to me as a gift he said now Kathy you can sleep on it Wow. I cried with thanks. I was so thankful that a 10 year old boy would think of me. And anyway, after that, I shared that with a family and the family took their children to Cambodia and bought a printing press for a family and the fabric. And they started producing pillowcases with scriptures on it. So people all over the world could sleep on it. Well, we went back to New Zealand and told Jerome, Jerome, mate, look, and I actually had one of the pillowcases and I showed it to him. And I said, your gift to me has touched the world and will continue to do that. He's like, what? I said, yes, your imagination, your creativity, your heart to give me that scripture so I could sleep on it. It's changed the world. So that's the power of the Holy Spirit impacting and inspiring children. So during this time of lockdown, during this time of families being at home, if you're a pastor or a leader, you can communicate so many creative ideas that will help parents um, in their homes. So that's just one. Imagine having an army of children, uh, you know, fabric painting pillow cases and sleeping on the word of God. Awesome. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's go back to the screen. Cool. So here we are. So look up. Mm -hmm. So if you can step outside, all right, or open a window every night and look at the stars together. This is just a simple idea. That's not, a, it's not too cloudy. Even so, looking outside, looking up 
often I'll just, before I go to bed, I'll walk outside and look up and go, God, you are the creator of the universe. That perspective, that bigness of God before the children go to bed, how good is that? He's not limited by time or space. So it's a reassurance. Go out there with your children um, and talk about how he's in control, that God is in control and he's got them in the palm of his hand. God is big. He has a big, mighty, loving hand and he's keeping us safe. And then just pray. Pray together with your children. Um, the whole family, go out and spend time under the stars. You can do that. And then I just thought of an activity to make stars and planets for the walls and the roof of your, of the children's um, bedrooms. So that would be fun, hey? Um, and then look at the scripture. Oh, Psalm 8 again. I will look up at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you've set in place. What are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Actually, Brendan put a melody to the first part of that scripture. Um, uh, when I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in place, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, your majestic name fills the earth with your amazing grace. Oh, what is mankind that you are mindful of him? Human beings that you care for us. Oh Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth with your amazing grace. Uh -huh. You can get that on Spotify. Spotify, it's on our album, Living Word album. And uh, that's just a little interlude right there. Okay, let's go back to the screen. Here we go. So, look up. Everybody said, look up. Okay, so we've got, oh, we've got a question here. Hi, Kathy. Ah, the PowerPoint. Sure, I can send you the PowerPoint. Or I might put it up on the website. What do you reckon, Sam? That'd be good. All right, hang on. Let me go back. There we go. Okay, so, hello, here I am, preacher woman. Speak the word of God. Speaking the word of God is so powerful. Okay, so take the time to speak his word every night. Remember, this is night sleep preparation until your children can quote it from memory. So, hmm, there's my scripture. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me... Oh, there's Jerome. Ha, huh, I pre-told the story. There he is there with his pillowcase for me. So speaking scripture before the children drop off to sleep. And kids need repetition. So this has got to get in their memory and in our memory. So the Bible says to meditate on the word of God day and night. So in peace I sleep. Children say this after me. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, keep me safe. This is a scripture that will bless and strengthen and, and for us too. Hello. Because what happens is the children go to sleep and then parents are like, ah, panic, panic, panic. Watch the news. Watch the news. What's happening now? What's happening now? Stop it. Slow down. Don't watch so much news. Know the facts. Know what's happening. But don't feed, don't feed on it. Don't feed on all the bombardment of fear. Feed on God's faithfulness. Feed on the word of God. Ask the children which word is the most important to them tonight as you put them to sleep. They might say, um, peace. All right, let's unpack that. What is Jesus' peace like? It's really, it's not like the peace of this world. It's peace that is even in the midst of strife and panic, you can have peace. Do you want to hear another story? We were in China and uh, a few years ago in a big, big city and um, we were about to catch a subway down into the subway to go to on a 10-hour trip to Beijing from where we were. And um, a monsoonal rain, there was like 5,000 people trying to get down to the station, the subway below. 
and into the tunnels. And um, this monsoonal rain began and I, well, Peter, people began to panic, passing their children to one another and their luggage because we had our travel luggage. And, and I sensed, oh my goodness, something's not right here. So I text uh, our intercessors back in Australia. I said, pray, I've lost my peace. And Brendan, we've lost our peace. And uh, what we found out was there was a landslide um, on the tracks and no trains were going to go anywhere. And had we got down to the subway with everybody else, we would have been trapped overnight. Um, so we got the peace of God to get out of that situation and spent six hours in a shop just waiting to get picked up by our guide. So, you know, in moments like that, when trouble comes, go to the Prince of Peace. And the Bible says he lives in us. So if he lives in us, we can teach the children, go to the Prince of Peace on the inside. Close your eyes, take a deep breath. Now, what is God saying to you? Right? So putting the word of God in them at night will set them up for a good night's sleep, will set their spirit up for um, strength and the Holy Spirit will be speaking to them through their dreams and caring for them and they'll wake up confident, they'll wake up assured, they'll wake up with the spirit of fear having to go in Jesus' name. So what's the word? Use this scripture, use it, and, and let me know how it goes. Let me know, use it, but you can't just do it for one night. It has to be repeated over and over and over and over again. Um, there's one song that our granddaughter gets put to bed with every night. It's Jesus, You Are My Lord that Brendan and I wrote. And um, every night, she's 10, for 10 years, every night, that song, and Jesus loves me, this I know, that. And um, it's just going to be part of her life forever. And she'll, I know she'll do that with her children as well. So there you go. Here's another thought. Oh, okay, blanket prayer, perfect for nighttime. Perfect for nighttime. So blanket prayer is just an idea that I had. Um, you know those fluffy blankets that are out now? I'm so glad winter is coming because we can wrap ourselves in those fluffy blankets and cuddle up, right? So I even use blanket prayer in online church on Sunday. It's up on the YouTube. You can watch it from last Sunday. And I demonstrated how to use it. Um, and all these ministers, Ministry moments, so uh, there's soaking time ministry moments on our YouTube as well. So wrap your child in their favorite blanket and pray a blessing over them while you hold them. You can hold your children. You can caress them. You can hug them. Okay, so strengthen them. Give them a word. And in that scripture in 2 Corinthians 1, if you read it, I'm not going to read it through, there's five times or more that the word comfort is used. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of our mercy, merciful Father, and the source of all, what? Comfort. So if we go to the source, we go to the source, we know that we've got to wash our hands. We know that we sneeze into our shirt. We know that we throw the tissues in the bin, we know to keep our distance. We know what those things are and we can learn more about that. But we've got to learn the things of the spirit and our children have got to be taught to tap into the spirit of the Holy Spirit that's living within them. So when they're trouble, troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. So we receive comfort from God. So you go to God if you need to. Wrap yourself in your blankie <laughs> and just pray over yourself tonight, all right? What we're doing for the children will work for us as well. Okay, so here's another thought. Pray, playing worship songs. Uh, the Bible says that it gives us uh, songs of deliverance. So fill your home with worship. Fill your home with praise. Sing yourself. Use the songs that God has given um, people from all over the world. And there'll be songs, you know, the, the song, The Blessing. 
is really touching the planet right now. The pronunciation of that blessing through song is giving people courage and strength. So, and it's also giving God the worship that he deserves. And what happens for me when I worship God out of my true heart, then God cannot resist loving on me. When it's true worship, when it's pure worship, he comes and brings assurance and brings his love. So worship as a family doesn't have to take very long. It's not a worship service for 20, 30 minutes, but hey, if that goes on, so, so be it. But one song a day in the presence of God, giving, giving um, him glory. So Revelation. Uh, the whole of heaven is worshipping God and we will join them one day. Hallelujah. So let's look. Okay, so blanket prayer, worship songs. Yes, yeah, so it's a good idea, hey, to put the um, PowerPoints up for you to download. That would be good. And you can use them and you can teach other people and share. That would be so good. Speak love show love you cannot say the words i love you enough i love you i love you with sincerity and the word love god's love is a demonstration of love it is action so helping our kids in this tense time when they're all together all day long um, <laughs> Helping them to show and demonstrate love. So, all good. Keep going. You're doing great, parents. Phenomenal. So, let these words be the words that the children hear at night time. I love you. Good night. I love you. And encourage them to respond with I love you back. Not as in, I love you back. <laughs> but I love you. <laughs> okay. All right. So, these words are powerful. All right, so um, love notes in their lunchbox. Obviously, if they're having lunch at home now, um, you could put it under their table mat or as a serviette, a letter, or under their pillows um, in surprising places and uh, help them to speak those words and write love, love letters and thank you letters to one another. So don't you absolutely adore this scripture in the living um the living bible love is patient this is the god kind of love and this is who god is he's kind he's not jealous boastful rude or proud doesn't demand its own way come on we're getting better at this not irritable Woo! okay that's a tester in these times in times of trouble getting irritable and losing your cool it, and tr being triggered um, the fruit of the spirit we say we know we have self-control it keeps no record of being wronged wiping it clean God's wiped your record queen queen clean he's wiped my record clean he holds nothing against us thank you Jesus um, he doesn't rejoice in wrong uh, but uh, rejoices doesn't rejoice about injustice but rejoices when truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, endures through every circumstance. I'm sharing lots of scripture tonight because scripture is the answer. The word of God is the answer. The word and the spirit working together. All right, so worship songs, we've done that. Speak love. All right, here's some practical daytime things. All right, so... Um, Obviously, age-appropriate conversations. So there might be times where you need to uh, take one child away from the others for a while to have a, a personal chat at their level. And obviously, little poppets, they don't want to hear, they don't need to hear all the in-depth conversations. So have open and honest conversations. Be ready anytime, anywhere for a child to ask a question and for you to stop and, and listen, really listen. So some of these things um, to start conversations I've got here. 
Uh, when have you most been afraid? What has been the happiest thing of your day? Because we don't want to be talking doom and gloom all the time and focusing on the, the problem, but we do want to give the children space for them to talk about it. If you could change one thing in the world, what would you change? See, these are little trigger questions. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would you change? What is one thing you couldn't live without? What is your favourite movie of all time? Why? Okay. What cartoon character would you most like to be and why? Um, and so forth. So, when you're having these conversations with children that are deep and meaningful, just, you know your child, um, you know your grandchildren and uh, their questions, they don't want long, long, long answers. They just want honest, open thoughts from you and your wisdom. So listen, listen. Concerned looks like, you know, focus if you can. Um, but there are times when kids just want to talk during, say, playing basketball outside or, or kicking a ball or just being girls doing nails or whatever. So have a listening ear. Time and focused attention is really what they're after. That Are you really listening to me? How many times do they have to say, Dad, 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 Mom, Mom? And I know we're busy um, with things that we're doing, uh, but we can stop and listen. When our daughter was uh, a teenager, so this is relevant, and I think teenagers need even more attention um, than even little ones, because little ones can be really happy just playing, but teenagers, their thought processes and what they're not saying is huge because they're thinking all the time and they're on their social media and having conversations with their buddies and their pals and you have no idea. So when a youth wants to talk to you, stop and listen. Um, this is what happened with our daughter when she was a teenager. So I'd go off to teach Bible college and um, leave Brendan and Elizabeth at the dishes and I would come back couple of hours later and they'd still be standing there this is the, in the day where no dishwashers right um, and they'd be talking I'm like what's going on and they'd be whoa talk Brennan would listen for hours and of course we only have one child so hello that's a little bit different right very different so but if you have moments where the child your child just needs you see if you can drop everything it means so much to them when you Take the time and give them focused attention. Leave space for them to talk. All right, don't jump in with opinions. Don't jump in with immediate responses. Listen, have a sensitive response. Sometimes kids say the randomest things, the most inappropriate things. <laughs> um, but that's okay, just let them talk. Um, uh, okay, an aff affirming touch, touch on the shoulder, buddy. You're going to be fine. Let's talk this through a positive word. Call on God for wisdom. Make sure you're speaking truth in life. Um, and you know, if you can, say to your child, come on, let's take this to prayer. Because if we're teaching children prayer habits, this is the best thing that we could leave for them, our legacy of prayer and faith in God. Take it to God in prayer. Talk to God in prayer. Write God a letter. Ask him a question and uh, look it up in the Bible. Let's find out what the Bible says. We have so many resources um, at our fingertips, um, good resources. All right, here we go. All right, filter the media. When there is a crisis, um, you know, say, say the beginning of the year with all the fires, there's been so much going on. Uh, we need to protect our children from the fullness of all that information. So we need to be the filter. We need to choose for them what they need to see and hear uh, because they can't process like we can. They can't, you know, figure it all out. It's coming at them 100 miles an hour. So don't expose them at an adult's level. Protect them. Filter. No. Come on. Be the filter. Let them discuss their thoughts and fears. 
reassure them, pray on the spot. Pray on the spot. One of the, the habits I've had with them, um, with our grandchildren, we live next to a hospital pretty much and we have helicopters sometimes come over, we see lots of ambulances and so we continually, all right, every time we see an ambulance, let's pray for that person, for those circumstances, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. The children need to hear you say, come on, let's pray, let's take it to God, come on, so that the burden is lifted. Once we've prayed, it's in God's hands. Once we've prayed, God moves. So we can assure the children, all right, we've talked to God about it. Now it's his. If we can't change a situation we, physically, um, we can do it through prayer. All oh, powerful. All right. Okay. This is the power of our words. They kill, they give life. They're either poison or fruit. So we're choosing to speak life. All right. I'm sorry. I'll keep going backwards and forwards. Okay. Have you got a breath? Can I look at some questions now and then I'll talk about teaching children their authority. Okay, so there's another thought. Let me put my glasses on. Um, hi, Kathy. For children who don't know God, right, and their parents don't know God, how do you approach them at this time to bring gospel in, the gospel in? Um, do you have any share, uh, sharing book on this? Well, anyone who's out there who might know of a sharing book on this topic, um, maybe I need to write one and put it on. That might be a project for me. Um, but immediately my thought towards that question is any child or parent or adult that I've offered prayer to in times of trouble have never refused. So I think when there's a crisis, for whatever re reason, even non-believers want to know that God's in control. Even if they've never been to a church, um, there's something about, can I pray for you? And do it on the spot, do it there and then not just to take away prayer and doesn't have to be all the religious and close your eyes and no eyes open just looking at the person so many times I've prayed God I thank you for say the name is Jack I thank you for Jack Lord I thank you Lord that you love him that he can know that you are for him right now in this time and I pray that he would find you in the middle of this trial Lord, I pray this for Jack in Jesus' name. You know, um, powerful non-believers in times of crisis will receive prayer. I really believe it. And if there's anyone out there that's got a comment about that, please put it on the chat. Are your songs available for use in our kids' church videos? We love you guys. Oh, Phoebe! <laughs> all on YouTube. Well, not all on YouTube, but... Um, we've got about eight praise songs and our worship songs are on Spotify too. So you can go uh, and check out Brennan and Kathy Clancy on Spotify, use the songs or go to YouTube and there are so many um, and there's video lyrics of our songs there too. So that would be awesome. All right, so Phoebe, they are there and on our website, just check out Send us an email if there's anything we can help you with. Okay, um, reading Josh's question. We are finding that the disruption that's come has shown us opportunities to learn and grow. So many great online resources are now available. That's true, Josh. Josh, we are running an hour of games on, on a Friday for our families on Zoom, releasing videos online church, writing cards to our kids. Fantastic. Do you have some creative ideas to keep engaging and connecting the kids in our churches while we can't meet in person? Awesome. You're doing great, Josh. What church are you from? I would like to know. I'm just So, yeah, so many online um, resources to help engage the, the families. So these things that I'm sharing, ministry moments, um, 
can help. Um, on our online church that we were doing, OK TV online church for kids, kids church, we have got um, craft ideas, especially with Easter coming up. I mean, if parents just go and Google craft ideas, um, you know, I think you're doing a great job, Josh. Even, yeah, I'm thinking of doing a Zoom kids <clears throat> actually this week. Um, I'll let you know about, <coughs> sorry, about that. Um, lots of creative ideas. Cooking, I've done lots of cooking. Um, kids love to make easy things in the kitchen. So just keep feeding off what's online. There's so much to look for. Sorry. <coughs> oh, got a chick tickle. Okay, so practical ways um, and spiritual ways. So here's something that I'm very passionate about is teaching children their authority. Their authority in Christ Jesus. When I first... Uh, when we came back to the Lord in 1992, I did a course uh, called The Believer's Authority. It changed my life. I had no idea that the name of Jesus was so powerful. I had no idea that demons trembled at his very name. So teaching children that they can use the name of Jesus when fear comes, when trauma has come. So the name of Jesus frightens the devil because that's the name that conquered him um, and we, we're celebrating that this week at Easter. Release the power of God through the name of Jesus. Okay, in Jesus' name is not like a full stop at the end of a prayer. It's in Jesus' name. The authority, it's not my name, it's the name of Jesus. So teach it, teach it, learn it, read it, practice it with the children. Refuse fear and worry and anxiety in your children. You take authority and, uh, and you teach them how to do it in prayer. Fear, go in Jesus' name. Pain, go in Jesus' name. Sickness, leave in Jesus' name. And uh, they'll see the power that's in the name. Release peace and joy and love. So Jesus said, all authority, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Okay, and then he said, I've given you authority over the power of the enemy to walk among serpents and scorpions and to crush them. Nothing shall injure you. Okay, so that's figuratively as well. We're not to go out and just walk among snakes and pick up scorpions. No, we, uh, that's the demonic realm that the assignments of the enemy, even in, in a crisis, to trouble uh, our churches, to trouble our families, in Jesus' name. No way. In Jesus' name. We take authority over this virus. It's not coming near our family. In Jesus' name. And you pray pray for your neighbours. Pray for, pray for everybody in this world that, that peace would come because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. All right. So here's, I'm going to quickly run through this idea. Here's something. And if, when these um, slides go up, on the website oktv.com.au then you can print them out because um, I'll just give you a little looks right so for each category of prayer I've got a little picture all right that you could put up around the house so on Monday it could be a praying for family day Tuesday's church Wednesday's friend yeah um, don't have to do it in days you could pray for the lot in one hit but this is just the thought that you could allocate a day. Today, on Fridays, we're praying for Australia, for the nation and our Prime Minister. And together, Saturday, we're covering the world. All right? So, now this is the confidence. This is the confidence, people, we can have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions asked of him. So, sorry. So here's my slide for family prayer, right? So you could print that out. Church, and I've used the same scripture so that we can just go, oh, we can have confidence when we pray for the church. Church universal, every church. School, while we're in shutdown, we can be still praying for our 
teachers and our principal and our and our, what the time when we will come back together praying covering our friends so these can be put up on the wall and um, when we're back in kids church we can have these put up on the wall and have prayer target stations around the room and you can move the children around the room and focus prayer have prayer walls I've got a humongous world map that I have actually that children can actually take their shoes off and walk on the world and stand on different countries and pray and pray so there's the world so we can have uh, prayer targets teaching children how to pray all sorts of types of prayer and that's probably another whole webinar that we can tackle together at some stage I'm loving this so I want to finish with this and I'm gonna ask Brendan to come on in so I wanted to talk about communion but first of all and I wanted to take communion in front of you because <clears throat> I want to show you what Brennan and I do nearly on a daily basis and in this time the power of the blood of Jesus is uh, is in operation and we need to apply and plead the blood on um, the YouTube channel two weeks ago I did a ministry moment and it was all about the blood I sang about the blood of Jesus and um, taught about the blood of Jesus so you can go and have a look at that um, ministry moment but I want to talk to you before we talk about that more and answer some more of your questions. Yes, I think uh, there's a chat window there you can open up. Awesome, too. great. Um, this couple, our dear, dear friends we've known for about 20 something years, um, the Goodwins, David and Therese Goodwin, have a ministry called Kids Reach. And I'm telling you, I went to his website today. He's done a whole thing on the virus. Um, he has qualifications and has studied children's ministry but also psychology and so many resources to help um, in troubled times. So go to kidsreach.org.au and grab a hold of David Goodwin's free materials, downloadable, so much to help you. All right, so before I do the communion, let's talk then. I'll go to, there we go, all right. It's downloaded. Hey, yeah. Gwen. Hi. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, what's downloaded? The, um, the slides are already on there. Oh! I think Sam wrote something. Wow, our slides are already up. That's our Sam technician, all in creative, all things media. He'll help you out. Okay, hi, um, Kathy, Josh, can I know the one hour game? All right, so Josh, we need to hear about your resources, please. Okay. Um, oh, so Helen. Helen's doing a Zoom storytelling this Saturday. How do we engage children of five to eight years of age? You have to be animated. Your storytelling, I mean, this. if you've got, are you saying you're having a picture storybook or are you just telling a story? So if you're just telling a story, you need little props, you need a few visuals, you need to be so vibrant. And even if you're telling stories, use character voices, change your voice for the different characters, add people in, act it out, um, be dramatic. Um, but if you've got a storybook, the storybook itself will captivate the kids because that's what authors do. That's why I did my book, oh. ha, 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 The Story of Music. All right, so that's if you have the pictures, then the kids are gonna love, they're gonna love the book, all right? So, Dan Bowman, Mighty Man. Uh, we're discussing the possibility of having kids connect groups on Zoom. Oh, perfect. For about 20 minutes at different times during the week with two kids leaders, huh? Would you suggest this time is spent in God's word with the kids, worship, fun and games, and leaders mostly talking, the kids engaging and talking, or a bit of everything? Okay. So if it's an open Zoom meeting with kids, it could get out of hand and be so much fun and crazy. I think you need to have just a moment where, hey guys, 
what do you want to talk about and give space for that what's your biggest question right now and uh, because that makes children feel like they're valued um, and not just like me tonight being a talking head (laughs) but engaging them I think uh, Dan if you're having 20 minutes that sounds great but they do need more word don't you think they do need you could teach them some of these things that we've been discussing tonight to equip them to be prayers to be spiritual giants in this time games awesome yep Um, so they need to have a good laugh with you because they miss you and they miss their leaders so it needs all of those elements. It needs to be but engaging, doesn't it? Totally engaging, but make sure, yeah, Dan, that they get the word and they get prayed for and a ministry moment. That's my passion. All right. It's on the digital page. Awesome. Cool. All right, so beautiful. So I'm going to have a ministry moment now with you, um, but also... I'm going to do ministry moments during the week. So join me. Keep an eye out on our Instagram, uh, OKTV um, Global. Kelly Young, beautiful. Hey, Bren and Kathy. We would love to hear your top tips on raising and occupying a strong-willed only child girl. (laughs) That's not you, is it, Kelly? (laughs) Oh no, your daughter. Oh. Who requires a lot of attention and struggles to play independently. We love you too, guys. Okay, so I'm going to call you tomorrow, Kelly. <laughs> um, because I'm a mum of an only child. Elizabeth's 40 she's now. Strong. She would say that <laughs> she's got three children now. She's learning how to cope with conflict between siblings and stuff. Um, I think your daughter is so creative. I think she has authorship within her. I think she has authorship. Mm -hmm. So I would challenge her to write a book. Yeah, um, a book. I'm talking a book. So what that looks like, I don't know. But I really think that she could handle that. But we'll talk some more. All right. Taking communion. I'm going to finish with this, my friends. Can you do that song? Can you watch Which one? The, the one the okay. Song yes. Um, was from 1995. Brennan wrote so this song in 1995. Lynn would remember it. Yeah. Actually, Al- Alison Hardiker's there too. Um, uh, and there's the scripture, all right, that Jesus, um, Paul, told us to remember. So let's do the song first, shall I? Okay. Thanks, Tom. Father sent his only son to heal the world and overcome. Mighty God, my only love. I'm washed and cleansed by your own blood, washed by the blood, washed by the blood, washed by the blood.
Father, we thank you, Lord. And as we remember, I'm going to take communion um, in front of you right now. But during the week with your children, please teach them. They're not too young to learn about what Jesus told us to do, how to remember him. Uh, so here we go. Let me just do this. So Paul said, I've handed down to you what came to me by direct revelation from the Lord himself. And the same night in which he was handed over, he took the bread and gave thanks. Then he distributed it to his disciples and said, take it, eat your fill. This is my body which was given for you. Do this to remember me. And at the same time he took the cup of wine and at supper and he said, this cup is the seal of my covenant, covenant in the blood in my blood drink it and whenever you do this drink it do this to remember me whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you are retelling the story proclaiming our Lord's death until he comes so when you take communion you can do this daily with your children and you know you don't need a wafer just grab some bread and some juice and uh, make it meaningful as we lead into Easter, it's the perfect time to train and teach your children how to discern the broken body of Jesus. He died and he was broken so we could be healed. Therefore, no virus, no sickness, no disease can stay or remain in our bodies. By his stripes, we were healed. So I take this in remembrance of his broken body and the blood of Jesus that has washed our sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for washing me. And Lord, I forgive. I'm forgiven, but I choose to forgive. And I forgive anyone and everyone that's ever hurt me, wounded me, used me, abused me. Jesus, I release them. And if you need to say their names, then do that. But I do this and we do this nearly every day. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Washed in the blood, set free. And I tell you, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of everything that's happening in our world, the uncertainties that the world is saying, we're not sure, we don't know, times, seasons, we do. Because God has told us in his word and we can trust. So keep connected with your kids through Zoom. How amazing is that? Dan Bowman, that's awesome. Brennan and I are going to do a Zoom this week for kids all over the world. We'll let you know what time that is and what day. I think it'll be Thursday morning, Australia time, 10 a.m. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, we love you. We celebrate all you're doing to help children in these troubled times. Join us everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, and especially our YouTube channel. God bless. Um, Hang on, there's one more question. Oh, yeah. I'm just okay, Josh. There you are. Okay. Oh, Josh Spectrum, awesome man. Oh, hey, Josh. Yes. Good to see you again. You can send the PowerPoint with the outline for our family's games. Wow. Oh, good. Great. Send it to us. Uh, just let Helen know. I'll send it through. Okay. So Sam will organise with you. Josh, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, opening up. Oh my gosh, there's 20 people on the chat. I was just. Oh! All right. I was posting the link there for the PowerPoints. All right, the link is there for the PowerPoints. So, can they see that? Uh, no. no. Oh, okay, where is it? Josh, I mean, Sam, stop hiding, come in. <laughs> this is the man that makes it all happen. And. Oh, um, uh, Sam, there's not me. So it's on the classic, so it's on the shop. It's on the shop. Oh, it's, oh, it's okay. Sh uh, okay, so if you go to shop.theclancies.com.au, shop.theclancies.com.au, um, you'll be able to get the slides there. Awesome. Rosemary, hi. Thank you. All righty. So would you guys like to do a Zoom with me as well at some stage and then we can meet each other? 
we could organize that for next week all right so good idea if that's a go up we'll put it on our instagram and oh you'll get an email because you joined via email and you'll also get um this webinar as an email tomorrow or this week and uh you can and it'll go up online at some stage it'll too be it'll be on youtube tomorrow <laughs> uh thank you thank you uh rosemary that will be great sounds good all right i yep. just i just want to talk to you I'll all night good night <laughs> Okay. Sleep well. Bye. Bye. Bye we love you. Mwah. I'm Bye for the hot cross bun. That's it. Hot cross bun time. Yeah. Right. Okay. Love you all. Mwah. Lockdown. Lock into Jesus. Mwah. Bye.